My name is Adrian Montgomery. I'm with ERP VAR. Uh, we are joined by Simon Quinn. He's the director of sales over at Serta Pro, and Nick Young. He's a senior ERP consultant. They're going to be showing us the Magento e-commerce interface with Sage 100. And Maya Green, he's a partner with VIP Integrated Payments, and he's going to be talking about how uh, VIP Integrated Payments helps clients with uh, their payment processing. So a little bit about Serta Pro. Serta Pro is based in Los Angeles. They're a leader in integrating Magento with Sage 100 Cloud. And they have, their product is called eLink. It's a two-way connector that handles all the data connection points for business partner portals and B2B and B2C e-commerce needs. They're a Magento technology partner and they're, they have a, a very seasoned certified developer staff with CPAs and programmers, and uh, they leverage over 20 years of expertise among their uh, staff. And then VIP Integrated Payments is a leader of integrated payment technology for North American merchants. And they really have leveraged their strategic partnerships with a multiple platform model. They don't just have one solution, but they can help you understand which solution is best for your unique needs as far as payment processing is concerned to get you the lowest fees and everything that go along with uh, payment processing. And so today we're going to be talking about how an order comes into the Magento e-commerce storefront and all the details of that order go back into Sage 100 with the Serta Pro e-link Magento integration. And we're going to be talking about how VIP integrated payments integrates with that and Sage 100 to offer up all the, the details about the customer to get the lowest credit card processing rate. And with that, I'm going to hand it off over to Simon to get it started with Magento. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Adrian. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Simon Quinn, the Director of Sales with Serta Pro. Also with me, I have Nick Young, our eLink Product Manager. And together, we're going to be talking about uh, and demoing Serta Pro's eLink software. So I'm going to provide a, uh, an overview, and then Nick's going to get into the more interesting, fun stuff, which will be a live demo of how eLink syncs between Magento and Sage 100. So as you will see, the functionality of eLink is basically, basically to connect uh, with Sage and allow your company to create an online business partner portal or a B2B, B2C website for your customers using Magento. And while this demo is for uh, Sage 100 specifically, it does work with the other Sage products for 300, 500, and for X3. Uh, so what you'll see today is very similar to uh, those platforms also. So often successful online businesses, you know, whether you're selling B2C directly to consumers or B2B directly to businesses or distributors, or if you're doing both, you're going to reach a point where, you know, these businesses are spending more time, spending more money managing data in both their web portal and in Sage. So you're managing product information, prices, uh, stock levels, uh, the customer information uh, across and, and web orders actually across two platforms. And that can be quite problematic. So it increases the, uh, the risk of errors and emissions in both systems and more importantly, affects your profit margins. So on the other hand, the integration does pay for itself and the return on investment is realized over time. So um, with a Magento e-commerce platform that's integrated with Sage using Serta Pro's eLink software, this key information is now gonna be synchronized between both systems. This reduces the time managing dual entry, it maximizes profits, and more importantly, it improves the overall customer experience and satisfaction. So Serta Pro has created a product called eLink, and it's a syncing technology that is a powerful tool that synchronizes data both ways. So now your Sage product and customer information can now be updated to your business portal or web store 24 seven. Online orders can now be created in Sage 100 and are ready to be processed within minutes. And all of this is completed without manually running any batch jobs or any other procedures. It's completely automatic. So with our software, the data flows between Sage 100 and the web store uh, using an encrypted uh, technology. 
So this makes your company's back end completely anonymous and secure and all while being PCI compliant. So having an online store means that, you know, or a business portal, if you will, uh, means that you're open for business all the time. And Certipro's e-link software now makes it approachable and affordable for your business to have an online presence. So let's take a quick step back before I hand this over to Nick. I just want to talk about what is Magento and why Magento. So fundamentally, Magento is an e-commerce platform. And the world's biggest brands love Magento for its flexibility. You know, because today's consumers uh, and businesses and their buying patterns are changing by the minute. Now, only Magento, which is also um, open source and scalable, can help you adapt and grow. You know, there is a global ecosystem of over 150,000 developers. And with a Sage business partner like Certipro, using Magento can boost your online sales while maximizing gross margins. Magento sells, uh, Magento businesses, I should say, sell more at a lower total cost of operation. Uh, the Magento Marketplace is the world's largest and most versatile. You know, it offers customized and tested extensions. Uh, and Magento powers more merchants on the inter internet than any other platform. And this is why Certipro is a Magento technology partner. So how does uh, eLink actually work? So eLink is actually, it's two parts. So one is an API that runs on top of the Sage server that allows us to talk to Sage using the Sage business objects. So basically with the eLink, uh, with eLink, if you go and create an order, it actually creates an order as if you're tapping through all the fields in Sage. So it does not put, it, does, it just doesn't put data in a database. So if you have any business logic that's built into Sage, we're gonna be following all the same business logic with the eLink API. So it's, it's going to basically load all of the customer defaults and populate all the fields that you expect to be populated. And Nick's going to cover this, and you will see this um, in the live demo. So I'm going to hand this over to Nick, our eLink product manager, who's going to provide, um, perform the demo and show you how eLink uh, syncs data from Sage 100 to Magento by performing a few transactions. Nick, over to you. Thanks, Simon. Okay. Okay, so this is our uh, Luma demo. This is just a default instance of Magento. So all we did is install Magento. Uh, I think it's 2.3 on this particular demo. And we installed our eLink enhancements and then um, linked the two together. So this is all out of the box functionality that you're looking at. So we're gonna go ahead and go to a product page just so you can see the products. And I'll explain uh, a little bit of what Simon was talking about just a minute ago. So all the products we can actually bring in from Sage. So you create a product in Sage, you click that you want it to be in and enabled, and we automatically can create that product in, in Magento. We'll bring over all of the information that we have available in, in Sage. So we'll bring over descriptions, we'll bring over the weights for the products. Uh, we'll bring all of the custom pricing over. So we bring customer prices, price levels, uh, so all of your contract pricing, everything that you'll have inside of Sage for promotional pricing, everything. So then when the customer logs in, and we're already logged in, we're actually seeing the price as it would be calculated in Sage. So you don't have to worry about entering prices in, in Magento or importing or exporting prices or anything like that. It's all automatic um, and it follows the same structure that's inside of Sage. Um, we also bring over inventory levels. So if you want to control in stock and out of stock on the website from your actual Sage inventory, uh, you have the ability to do that as well. So I'll go ahead and uh, go through the process of just placing an order. So we'll just grab a couple of pro products here from this page and add them to our cart. And we'll just uh, go to the checkout so that I can just show you the uh, process of actually exporting the orders to Sage and, and invoicing from that point. So when we get to the um, checkout, you'll see at the top of the checkout, we have the customer information. So we're bringing all of the customer information from Sage. If you have an existing customer in Sage, they'll get all of their addresses loaded automatically in the Magento um, when you link their account or they sign up online. And um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if, if you have an existing relationship with the customer, they don't have to worry about re-entering all of their customers if they've already done business with you in, in the past. So we'll go ahead and just select the default shipping address that we have here. Quick. 
shipping, and then I'll go to the payment methods. So here's where we add a couple of payment methods to the solution. Um, so we have credit card and bill me. Bill me is actually connected to the customer's payment terms in Sage, as well as the credit hold in Sage. So you can have it, um, your existing B2B relationship with them, they can check out on account, and this is basically their terms. If they are a new customer or they don't have terms or they're on credit hold though, this will just disappear and they'll be forced to check out with the credit card. So this is uh, integrated with Sage as far as the payment method goes. For credit cards, if you're using any sort of Sage integrated payment processor, which the VIP team will go through that with you momentarily, um, we can integrate with, with the payments as well. So what we'll do on the web is we'll do a pre-authorization on the web and then we'll actually bring that transaction token in, in transaction in with the sales order uh, so that the actual capture happens during the invoicing process in Sage. So you don't have to worry about whether you know, you've already charged a card but you didn't ship the merchandise so you have to go refund or any of that. Um, you'll be able to do a standard pre-authorization here to make sure the funds are there and then you'll be able to actually charge the actual amount during the invoicing process. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and check out with the credit card so I can show you that process. Again, this is using the tokens going back and forth. So we're not actually storing any credit card information. This is going to go straight to the processor and um, get tokens back. So this is all PCI compliant and we're not transferring any information back and forth between your Sage and Magento. So when we go ahead and place this order, we'll get a confirmation. And then I'll show you the Magento customer portal or customer account. This would take a demo to go slow. All right, let's give it one second. There we go. All right. So once the order is placed, we'll go ahead and look at our customer account. And we can see on the customer account, if we go to the sales order screen, um, that order went very fast. So normally that order would go up here in the pending orders. Uh, until it actually exports to Sage. That order is already exported to Sage, so um, went faster than I could get here. Uh, so you can see down here, we have this order from today, um, and it's got a web order number. So this would normally go to pending orders, and then as soon as it exports, it comes down to accepted orders where it gets the actual Sage information. So down here, you're looking at actual information from Sage. So we click and we view the sales order, all of this information is coming directly from Sage. So if in Sage we go and we change the quantities on products or change the pricing or even add or remove products, uh, the customer is gonna see that reflected here in their account as soon as that information is sent back. One thing you'll wanna notice on the sales orders, we have this, this second order from, from October that doesn't even have a web order. Um, we're bringing all of the Transition, transactions from Sage into the web, regardless of where they originated. So customer doesn't have to place an order on a web to be able to use the their account online. So anything you do in Sage, it's gonna be reflected in their account here as well. So we're going to go into um, Sage and we'll go ahead and process that order. So if we look at the order. In Sage, we've brought that web order number into here, so your customer service is able to look up the orders by that confirmation number that the customer would have on their email, as well as the Sage order number if it's in their account. And when we open this order, this is what Simon was talking about. We're using the business objects when we create the order. So when we go in and we put the customer order customer number on the order, it's going to load all of the customer's defaults into the form. So any customer defaults or scripting or business logic that you have built into this form, we're gonna follow all of that. So you don't have to worry about, you know, duplicating logic on the web and in, in Sage as well. So from there, we override all the fields that we need to that are related to that order. So we go and we fill in the ship to and build to addresses. We fill in the products that are coming from the web. And then you can see all of the, everything is calculated as it would normally be. So for here, I did a credit card payment on the web. So here's that pre-authorization information. And again, this is 
Um, just like you just entered the credit card information directly in on the form. So when we do the invoicing process and we post that, that's when it'll go and do the capture on that credit card. So we'll, we'll go ahead and go to the invoice data entry and we'll just manually invoice this. If you're using any sort of shipping um, software such as Starship or anything like that, um, you'll create your invoice and invoice, um, sh you know, the, the shipping entry. We're going to grab the tracking information from the same information in the same field, so you don't have to worry about that either. So we'll grab this sales order, we'll add our tracking numbers. So the integration with Starship or any shipping software will work out of the box as well. And we'll just go ahead and ship that complete and create our invoice. So now the invoice is created, that's gonna sync back to the customer's account on the web. Um, we call this live syncing. We're using a syncing system so that you don't have to worry about if Sage is not available. Um, you're doing maintenance on your database, your internet connection, your office is down, whatever reason, it can't access Sage. The customer has full view of their account still. They can come and print their invoices. They can make payments or create orders. You don't have to worry about the fact that, that your Sage isn't available. So I'll give that a minute to sync, and while that's doing that, I'll show you a couple of other the features that we have um, built into the solution. Uh, one is our quick order form. So we went through the process of browsing the web. We choose the category. Um, we selected an item. You could come search for items, et cetera. But our quick order form is more like a PO entry for your business customers. So your B2B, they're used to sending you a PO with you know, SKUs and quantities and in, then in placing the order. So here they can come in, they can type a SKU or they can select from searching very quickly by SKU or name. So we'll just grab a couple of items and add it to the form. And then they can update the quantities and, and add these to the card and check out. This is integrated with Sage, so all the availability information will come from state, Sage. You can actually have it show this actual stock if you wanted to, uh, or the standard in stock and out of stock that Magenta's provides and all of their custom pricing comes here as well so if they had quantity breaks for this so say they ordered 10 and you get them a discount on here if they put their mouse over here they would see those quantity breaks or if they change it to quantity it would automatically adjust the totals and when they hit add to cart and check out this goes directly to the checkout so they don't have to worry about um, you know multiple steps add to the cart go to the cart go to checkout etc this is going to go straight to the checkout and let them check out so this is a very quick way for your re repeat customers to enter orders and, and get them into your Sage system. And if we go back to our invoices, you can see we have that invoice that we just created. Here's this original sales order number. You can see the tracking number came over. Again, we ring all of the transaction history. So we have invoices that don't even have sales orders. The customer has those views in their account as well. And if we go view the invoice detail, you can see all of the information from Sage for the actual shipped items. So if we had only shipped one of those items, uh, it would only show what we actually shipped here. Um, plus, you have, say, payments you need, you have custom, uh, you have invoices that the customers need to pay. So you allow customers to check out on terms. You want them to go back and make payments online if, if they want. So here we have our payment section. Again, we bring all of the transactions from Sage. So customer sends in a check. They can come and look in those payments and see what invoices they paid with them. But they can also make a payment online. So if I go to make payments, I get credit card. If your payment solution supports ACH, you can do ACH where they can put in their routing and account number. Um, and then if they save their credit card when they're checking out or they add a credit card to their account, they'll be available here. If they need to add a credit card directly here, they can do that as well. So there's no you know, need to actually have the credit card already saved to do this. Um, from here, they can add from their open invoices. So we'll find all their open invoices, allow them to select them. Say they want to short pay. If you allow them to short pay, they can come and put in whatever amount they want, add that to their register, and place that payment. It's going to work much, much like the sales orders did. So this goes up to pending payments until it gets exported to Sage. Um, this actually won't move down to payment history until you post it in Sage. So this is not applied to the customer's balance yet. So if their balance is wrong and they come and look, they know why, oh, I have this payment, the pending payment that's not yet applied. So this will be exported to Sage as a cash receipt. 
it'll have um, already applied to the invoice the way that the customer is selected online. So there's no manual entry in Sage when it comes to this payment. So it's just a quick way to get your customers to actually pay their, their payments online. Um, we have some other features. So this is a high, uh, high level overlay overview of some of the features that eLink supports. Um, we have other features like RMA. We have a multi-customer and sales person extension. Uh, we have a customer custom products extension where you can limit the products that the customer sees by, you know, custom products that are available to them. We have a fully integrated uh, iOS and, and Android apps. So there's a lot of other functionality that we can show you in a personalized demo if you want to contact me or Simon to, to set that up. But I'm going to go ahead and pass this back to Simon. I appreciate everybody that, that is watching. And Simon, back to you. Thanks so much, Nick. So lastly, I'll just wrap up with a quick minute uh, wrap up here. So I just want to talk about what CertiPro uh, can do for you. So we know that from our experience that no, no two websites or web portals are the same. Uh, for example, every site has a unique look and feel. Uh, CertiPro is not only a Gold Sage development partner, but we are also a Magento technology partner and we have Magento developers in house. So what that means is if you need an end-to-end e-commerce solution or a business partner portal, we can manage the entire process for you. If you just need the e-link software piece to connect Sage to your existing website, your existing Magento website, uh, we can work with your Sage business partner or web development team to provide recommendations and solutions to get that accomplished. We work with many Sage business partners and their customers to meet all of their individual e-commerce needs. And again, as I said, this works with Sage 100, 300, 500, and X3. So I'm sure that there, are, uh, that there may be questions, and we'll attempt to get to all of them at the end of this call. Um, but my info is up here. So as, as Nick had said, if you'd like to see a dedicated real-time demo of the transactional flow um, back and forth to Sage and do a much more in-depth um, uh, demo, uh, we can set that up for you. So with that, I'll hand that back to Adrian and we'll go over to VIP payments with Mia and Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Simon and Maya. You should have control. Perfect. Hi guys, my name is Maya Green. I'm the uh, president of VIP Integrated Payments and the VIP is a uh, on a high level, we are independent resellers of the payment solutions that integrate into all of the Sage products. Um, what we do is we try to put together a solution for the client, not put the client into one solution, right? So we, we do a customized approach and we look for the best solution uh, based on the client's needs. So we do Sage 100, 300, 500, X3, Intact, um, SAP, Oracle, you, you name it, we do it. Um, our wheelhouse is Sage and uh, we do a lot of, uh, you know, installs for, for Sage. We work with a lot of the um, third party solutions for Sage and um, Certa Pro is, is one of our best partners. Um, so what we'll do today, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into kind of what to look for as far as um, the, when you get into payments, the, the contracts that you're looking at are kind of the, the big deal. Everybody thinks it's rates and fees, but rates and fees are, are kind of sliding depending on what the client does, how they process, and some other things. At the end of the day, it's really about the contract. What am I signing up for? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little deeper dive into that. I'll give you kind of a breakdown of, uh, you know, who we are and what we do first. Then we'll hand it over to Jay. And Jay is our counsel. Um, he has been in the uh, um, payments industry forever. And uh, he that's that's all he does. He's a, an attorney for um you know, payment solutions. He can help you with anything that you need as far as that goes. So if you have questions, um, you know, or your clients have questions, feel free to reach out to Jay. And then we'll hand it over to Tom to talk about 
um, you know, how to negotiate lower rates and some other things, but let me move forward. Um, we'll do a little bit about us, early termination fees, liquidated damages, third-party uninstall process, rate negotiation, uh, support your industry, equipment leasing, grossly overstated savings, uh, support, and why you should work with a payments consultant, whether you're a partner or a client. So about us, um, we are independent. We do um, what's best for the client, and we are completely processor ag agnostic. Um, so we work on a multi-platform model, meaning that we can work with anybody out there, any of the solutions. Um, and we provide an end-to-end -end suite of payment solutions. Um, we have multiple partners, um, diverse network of partners and alliances. We have worked with a lot of the Sage 100, 300, 500, X3 partners for years, um, and, and we do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we've been doing this uh, for about 17 years now, and um, you know our relationships have, have stood the test of time. So um, we have about 3,500 Sage 100 payments installs under our belt, um, about 5,500 overall uh, Sage installs, whether it's 300, you know. 500 X3 intact. Um, so we, there's not much that we haven't seen when it comes to integrated payments. Um, so what we would like to do, and, and really the goal is to become your go-to integrated payments consultants in the industry. Um, you know, we know that you have a bunch of options out there. You're contacted all the time. And when it comes right down to it, you have options. We have all of those options under one roof, and we will tell you the pitfalls and the benefits of them. So just keep that in mind when it comes right down to what, um, you know, what you're looking for and, you know, how to look for it. Reach out to us. We would be happy to help you with everything um, from A to Z when it comes to that. You know, we offer, you know, differentiating products, um, things that nobody else has in the payments game. And we are ETA certified payments professionals, meaning that uh, the Electronic Transaction Association has certified us kind of like a CPA, but for payments. So with that, what we'll do is we're gonna get into a couple of terms that you need to look for on your contracts when you're signing up for payments. This is stuff that we help you weed through and um, you know, kind of you know, just basically help you maneuver if you are in a contract or if you're about to get into a contract, obviously we'd love to have your business. We'd love to set up the contracts for you, but if you already have one, we'd, we'd love to help you kind of negotiate that and um, you know get into a better situation. So we will get into um, the term. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Jay. Jay will walk you through it and um, you know, if you, have any questions at the end, feel free to shoot those questions over. And with that, I'll let Jay take this one. Great, thank you, Maya. Um, again, my name is Jay Reeve, and I am, I've been an attorney focused on the payments industry exclusively for uh, gee, 21 years now. So, um, and, and Maya said it and said it the right way. I mean, all merchant contracts are not created equal. Um, it's, it's more than just pricing. Um, the, the, the actual terms and conditions are different from processor to processor. And one of the benefits that you get from VIP is that you have the opportunity to look at, at different contracts because, uh, you know, some things will be common in, 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 in certain contracts, some things will not. Um, and you'll have the ability to work with them and find better provisions. Um, and one of the first provisions that you'll want to look at when you look at these contracts is, is the term. Um, this 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 term provision that we have here is one that uh, a lot of processors use, and it's kind of egregious. I mean, it's a three-year term combined with what you will probably find in most agreements or a lot of the agreements is an exclusivity clause. Um, so you've got to work with these guys, this processor. You got to work with them exclusively for three years, and uh, these contracts are what we call evergreen. If you don't terminate it. Um, promptly and within the within the required time period, then the next thing you know, you've just you've just automatically re-upped for an additional three-year renewal term. 
so, you know, you got to be careful of that. There's most contracts, most merchant agreements will have a three-year term, um, but and most of them will have auto uh, evergreen provisions, but um, most of them are not for three years. Um, the 90-day renewal period, you've got to you've got to give notice at least 90 days prior to the expiration of the initial term, or you'll automatically renew for an additional three years. So that's just one of the provisions that that you'll want to look for and, and be careful of when you're looking at, looking at these merchant agreements. There we go. Indemnification. Uh, indemnification is also a provision that it's in every contract. It's in every merchant contract. Um, but indemnification provisions are not all the same. Um, you, ideally, you want to find a mutual indemnification clause. Uh, there are some merchant agreements that out there that are uh, that provide mutual indemnification. Uh, if it's not mutual indemnification, at least you want something that's that's halfway reasonable and doesn't and doesn't hold you liable for things that you should not be liable for, and specifically things that are outside of your control. So um, when you have the opportunity uh, to compare contracts, be sure and look at the indemnification provisions uh, to see how how fair and reasonable they are. Uh, termination. A lot of contracts have this, and you need to be careful of it. Um, this, this is this, this has. Uh, um, uh, well, actually, on this provision, this talks about the merchant's agreement, merchant's ability to terminate. Uh, there are some contracts out there that have that. Uh, there are some contracts out there that ha give the processor the ability to terminate um, for any reason at any time upon notice. Um, but there are also provisions that will allow you to terminate, and specifically. Uh, you should, um, a lot of the good agreements have give you the ability to terminate the merchant agreement if there are price increases. Uh, price increases can be a nature of the beast in, in the processing world, and uh, some of them are, are processor specific. So if you've got a clause that allows you to terminate, if they raise your pricing, then, then, then that'll be beneficial for you. Um, the exclusivity provision that, that shows up here, that's going to be real common in a lot of these, and that's specifically tied into the liquidated damages clause or early termination fee ETF clause that you'll see in a lot of these agreements. Um, you, you want to stay away from the ETF clauses if possible. You want to stay away from exclusivity if possible. If it's not possible, then um, exclusivity is is not nearly as bad if you don't have a big early termination uh, fee section or, or liquidated damages section. So be sure and pay attention to those. And, you know, if, if you've got some language on exclusivity and early termination fees, read it very carefully. If you don't understand it, find you a lawyer or, or somebody on my team that can help walk you through it and explain what, what the risks are, are related to those provisions. Jay, can you uh, walk them through a little bit about what uh, liquidated damages means? Yeah, and a, a lot of it, the devil's in the details, but basically what, I mean, generally speaking, the liquidated damages provision is is going to say something like, you promise to process all of your transactions with us for three years, and if you leave early, you're going to pay us what we would have made under this agreement um, if you had stayed with us. So, um, you know, and those are the ones that can be, you know, depending on your processing volume and the length of time of the, of the contract, you know that that can add up really really fast. You know if you're paying if you're paying several thousand dollars a month in processing fees, uh, and you're in a three year agreement and you terminate after year one, then basically what they may try and do is say, okay, our fees were four thousand dollars a month, so four thousand times twenty four months, the remaining number of term period in your agreement, uh, that's what you owe us now. Write us a check for uh, five thousand times twenty four. Uh, so, so that can be the real problem. Now, a lot of the better agreements, they a lot of them will have liquidated damages, but a lot of the more reasonable agreements will have uh, like a fixed fee. You know, if you if you terminate early, you pay us 500 bucks, something like that. Um, you just have to look carefully for those liquidated damages or ETF clauses so that you can read it, understand it, and know what your real risks are because it can be substantial. You know, you think you're, you've got a better deal, you're changing processors, and then the next thing you know, you got a processor claiming, 
you know, you owe them tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in liquidated damages clause. So be sure and pay attention to those clauses very carefully because they can cost you a lot of money. Guys, so one thing to keep in mind is that anybody that VIP works with, and again, we're processor agnostic, anybody that we work with, we do not sign with anybody that requires us to have a long-term contract for our clients. So you would not, your clients would not have long-term contracts with us. If we're not doing our job right, they have the right to move wherever they want. And that's the way that it should be. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about, you know, sending your clients one way or the other, because any of the uh, processing relationships out there will require a few of these things. VIP does not require that. We never sign your clients or, you know, if you are the client, we never sign you to a long-term contract. So uh, with that, what we will do is we will turn it over to Tom and from here, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, third-party uninstall process. So if you're going with a third-party solution, kind of what, what that process looks like, and you know the install and uninstall process so with that i will uh, turn it over to tom it sounds like tom's having a little bit of technical difficulty so what i will do no, no is I, I, I oh good good Um, so Mike, if you just want to click through this one, um, I kind of call this kind of, uh, go to the rate one first, the other one, I kind of call this the prenup, right? Cause as you're, if you sign up with a, a person that, or a company that does the integrated payments inside of Sage, um, you want to make sure that if you are to leave or if, if, when, if and when you want to leave that the uninstall process is not a, a burden so um there's some processors out there uh that integrate with into sage 100 that is very cumbersome to where if you if you wanted to leave not only do you have to worry about the um the legal language in it but now you have to figure out how you're going to get that out of sage and get it back to stock sage um so some of the processors out there require that you reinstall library master AR and SO um, in, in order to actually get it to where you can then choose another processor. So that's why I kind of call this the prenup cycle <laughs> um, to where you can, you know, before you get into a long term agreement, uh, understand what it will take to get out of that long term agreement. And so. Um, always ask that question of, you know, well, if we were to move away from uh, from this processor, what that looks like. So that way you're not blindsided by that um, if, when you want to leave. So always check that out. And then go on to the next one. And then um, another thing to be, um, uh, to think about too is is negotiating lower rates. There's all sorts of different pricing models when it comes to processing payments. Uh, one that we never offer uh, or, or try to steer people away from is tiered pricing. It's the most expensive uh, pricing model out there um, to where if you're, it's basically, it's basically like a bucket system. So if it's a debit card, it falls in this bucket. If it's a rewards card, it falls in this bucket. And if it's a business card, corporate card, purchasing card, it falls into this bucket. Um, um, so we, we never offer that one because there's no value to that for you as the customer. Um, the pricing model that you want to be on is what's called interchange. And so that way you have the lowest cost available. Uh, there's other keywords uh, that, that are level two and level three processing, uh, which I'll get into in just a little bit. But that also talks about um, how you can uh, lower your rates. Um, and level two and level three processing, it's not a clear all for every type of card. It only pertains to your business cards, corporate cards, purchasing cards. Um, and so some processors understand this. Other 
people, other processors don't. And so they'll just put all your volume on level three without actually digging into each detail in your merchant statement. And so you'll go grossly overstate savings, which I'll get into just a little bit too. Um, um, uh, one that we try not to do either. Some people like it because uh, flat rate pricing, it's easy for them to to forecast. And that would be the only other uh, pricing model that, that we would, um, that if you wanted to look at, we always try to go to interchange, but if people want flat rate pricing, we can do that too. That way, again, it's easier to forecast. So then that way you could just do, you know, dollar volume times X equals uh, fees, right? And so that way it's very simple. Uh, Square, PayPal, um, you know, kind of made that, that uh, pricing model very popular. Uh, now we, uh, this is all we do, right? So we only integrate um, uh, into accounting systems like Sage. Um, so we totally focus on all the accounting, how it posts to the GL, um, how your internal team is going to be enhanced, right? And, and make operations a lot smoother. Um, so we've worked almost exclusively with, with wholesale and distribution companies uh, construction services, chemical and, and nonprofits. Uh, basically, you know, folks that, that, uh, that are using Sage 100, um, and, and uh, have an, a, a, an, an advanced ERP system. Um, so we understand the system, how, how it's going to work, how you want it to function and where, where you'll save both time and money on that too. Um, just like Maya was saying before, we want to be an extension of your business. Um, one thing that we, or another thing that we don't do either is, uh, lease equipment. Um, a lot of times we'll either, um, give you, we're always running promotions. So we we're offering discounts or, or giving away, uh, the terminals. Um, the terminals are very inexpensive. Um, the most expensive one around, uh, uh just under $600. The standard one is about $300. Um, so there's no point to really leasing those equipments. Uh, a lot of folks, like especially banks, will lease you uh, credit card terminals, and uh, they'll lease it to you for you know usually between twenty five and forty dollars a month. And if you think about it, it, ten months goes by and you've already paid for that terminal, even though you might be in a three year contract. So now uh, that bank or that processor is, is profiting you know forty dollars a month extra because in those in that first 10 months 10 months you paid for that terminal um so we don't do leasing it's not right and uh and a lot of people just don't know they think that these terminals are very very expensive and, and they're just not um so read the fine print too uh, if they're not giving it to you for free or at a discount um or as a one-time payment then uh don't don't sign that the terminals are too inexpensive uh, to get into a long-term agreement like that and just like I was saying before, um, it's always nice when you see a big savings, but ask questions because this happens a lot to where you might have um, an inexperienced uh, sales representative and they might not even understand what level three is. And so for like this one, they're basically saying that their entire volume is going to have level three savings when they're not the debit cards don't get level three savings. They have their own interchange rate and rewards cards uh, don't get level two or level three savings because they have their own interchange rate too. Again, it, level three, level two only pertain to business cards, corporate cards and purchasing cards. So uh, now that you know that, you can start to question uh, these rate analysis that folks are giving you because um, this is completely false uh, that, that the person gave. So. Uh, next one. And then this is one of the reasons why, or another reason why to join the team and hire a payment consultant. Uh, we're neutral when it comes to the integration. Uh, a lot of times during our discovery calls, we start to ask questions to understand your business uh, uh, very well. So then that way we can, um, you know, provide what the best solution is for you. Uh, we try to teach you everything, just like when it comes to the processing, how people are making money, uh, stuff like that. So then that way, everything's transparent. Um, 
so we do that usually always during a, a discovery call and a in a demonstration um and uh we kind of give you the pros and cons of of the different options you know if you if we go with this particular outfit then it will have this solution and then this one would be better and so we, we kind of give you that breakdown of each one of them and then next slide um so we try to make the process as easy as possible so for next steps what we typically like to do um some people just want to uh want to just get it done so they won't do a demonstration but we love doing demonstrations because uh, not only does it help us learn more about your business but now we can uh pinpoint and show you exactly how it's going to enhance your business and how you're able to be going to be able to save time by integrating your payments inside of inside of sage um so we'll provide a one-on-one -on -one demonstration um if you prefer uh that way we can show you exactly how the the product works and functions and again how it's going to help your business um after that once you, you once you give it the okay and your team gives it the okay we'll go through the underwriting process and the underwriting process is very simple um typically we just need the signed um application uh, again, we do month-to-month -month agreements, so you're not locked into a long-term contract or anything like that. Um, just like Maya was saying before, um, um, our philosophy is if we're doing our job right, then you'll be a customer for a long time. Um, if we're not doing our job right, you shouldn't be punished to leave, right? That's always been our philosophy, and that's where we stand on it. So, um, and then the approval process is, is very smooth. So we'll get uh, approval within 24 hours. Uh, typically all we need is the signed application and then a copy of avoided check. That way uh, we know, that way we have a hard copy of where to send your funds. Uh, the setup process then follows that uh, to where um, we'll have the credentials in order to set up Sage. And then you uh, pinpoint when you want to go live. And so we'll do a screen share uh, so that we can then set up Sage. The setup process typically takes less than 30 minutes. Um, sometimes we can even have it done within five or 10. Uh, so it, it's very easy and simple to set up. Um, it, a lot of times it already it's already included in your Sage uh, install. Um, so there's uh, literally not much to activate. It's just, it's just setting up Sage and telling it that you want it to have payments included. And then uh, we provide training and support as well. So we'll, we'll provide um, a lot of times people want to have just group training to where it has everybody all in the same room so that we can uh, train everybody all at once. Um, or uh, folks like to do it uh, with each individual person or, or maybe two groups or three groups. So uh, whatever works for your team works for us, um, and uh, and we'll train uh, all of your people as well. Uh, not only that, but we also do uh, ongoing support. Uh, all of this is free, right? So we don't charge for implementation. There's no uh, install fees, no set of fees, no implementation fees, no support fees. Uh, everything's all included. Um, um, so you can ask one question you can ask a thousand questions that it would it's uh it's all the same to us and that's kind of the cornerstone of our business we understand that support is key so we invest heavily in support um we hate i personally hate being on hold on support um uh, so i hate calling into 1-800 numbers and dialing different numbers in order to get to somebody that doesn't know anything about my business or the product that that I that I use, um, so that's why we also give out our cell phone numbers. So these are all of our numbers. So call us, text us, email us, uh, write us a letter. Uh, just let us know if we can help anytime, uh, anywhere, and we can always do a, a, a screen share um, or anything like that too. Um, our support is 24/7, 365, so we're always available whenever you are. Um, and um, all of our support is uh, US, uh, US based support as well. So we don't outsource it anymore uh, either. So, other than that, I think that pretty much addresses everything. Um, I guess I'll bring it back to Adrian. And Thank you, Tom. 
I just want to wish everyone uh, a great week and everybody stay safe. Thank you so much.